by the name of Judge Jed Raycroft, who's um, looked at Wisconsin on some of the dealings or some of the settlements with the SEC and some of these big banks. And he threw one of the settlements out with Citigroup. He threw it out and said, nah, uh, go back and state the facts and find out who actually did the stuff and what's going to be done with the individual involved. That's like the biggest thing in the financial world right now. Uh, part of why I wrote the book is so people can find out what actually happened during the crisis and where we, where, what's, what should happen next. A lot of these books about the financial crisis are kind of entertainment driven. It's more like they give you some, maybe 20, 30 pages, maybe 50 pages of like some behind the scenes stuff from meetings and memos and emails that you don't know about, that the public's not aware of, and then the other 250 pages is kind of fluff. So I, I wrote the, the, the beginning part of the book with the different, most difficult part because it's about my family, and if you don't get that part right, then you can't really, you know, people stop speaking to you, um, <laughs> you can't go home. But I made most of the funny stories about me. My problem with people is that when they tell, start telling the truth, tell your truth. Don't tell other people's truth. You know what I mean? My problem with a lot of people, when they start telling, they always tell them what they know, tell them what had happened and what they don't seen or heard. And you wait to hear the part that they did, they never get to that. Like, come on, tell the whole story. Don't just tell what you know about somebody else. And so, people, a lot of people making money from books where they're writing what they know about somebody else. Tell what happened, tell what you did too. So my book's about more about you know what I did and some of the stories about you know my family, but most of it is about me. Um, this is the first three chapters about my hometown in Farmville, Virginia, Prince Edward County. Um, and when I was a kid, there was a big secret going on about something about the school. I mean, it was all we grew up hush hush. I knew it was something. I didn't quite know what was going on. That they had closed the schools, but it was like ancient history to me. And then um, even in the schools, um, none of the kids wanted to talk about it. Because I remember there was one girl who um, who did a presentation, a great presentation on school clothing. But everybody, you know, the teacher tried to get everybody to talk about it. People had their head down. And, you know, nobody really, because it was like a, it was a hot button issue. Um, none of the white students want to talk about it. None of the black kids want to talk about it. And I'm just thinking to myself, would somebody please give the girl an A so she can go, in, go somewhere and sit down? You know, please. <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't really learn about it until I learned what happened until I got to business school and I did it. I wrote a paper on it. I was like 26. And so I wrote um, what actually happened and actually went to the University of Virginia Law School and started with the legal case, which basically talked about how they closed, how they managed to close the school. Instead of um, adhering to Brown versus Board of Education, they, they decided to close the school.